It's four kids from Warwick, man. I'm around doing gigs, going to gigs, you know what I mean? Just sort of decided to get, let's get a band together. Very, na very naive, but you know, it's just fun. Go on, you know? go on, go on. There's no plan, it just we hit it harder and it you know, distorted the bass a bit more. Around that time, you either liked it or you didn't. A lot of punks that could turn their nose up at it. We were very overlooked in England, we were like the underdogs, we always have been. That's fine, you know, it's how you do it, it takes years, you know. We, we, we have around the world, we're lucky, 40 odd years. It took us around the world, that, that song we hate, right? <laughs> Could have picked a better song than that. But they keep saying to me, what's happened to you, Rat? I'm like, I was 17 at 18 at the time. <laughs> I'm 58 now, I'll see if you like this. <laughs> People go, should you go out by now? Took them piercings out by now. Where's the sensible clothes by now? It carried on, punk never died, just carried on. It's not a false thing, it's part of life, it's part of what I feel. Right? It's our 40th year, 40 years we've been going. It's their fault, not ours. I keep buying the record and coming to the gig. So that's great. The first gig that I ever saw the Verrucas at, oh. we used to go from Newark where we used to live and then we used to jump the train from Newark to Grantham and English dogs were obviously from Grantham which was the next town to us and they used to have a brilliant club called the Phoenix and always remember going there and uh, the Verrucas supported English dogs at the Phoenix, but they had a stand-in bass player, Gavin Ward, who then went on to big things in Bolt Thrower, but he was standing in on, on bass, and that was the first time that I saw the Brookers, and it was with the English Dogs in uh, Grantham, but that would be the, the same time that they would have appeared in Sounds, so I can't remember it. Obviously, I must have read it at some point, but it's just one of those things, it's that long ago, I can't remember. Because we hate everything that war and government stand for, basically, it's, it's nonsense. The idea of war, the world doesn't need war, but war is a produce of man. You know, man is the only entity on this planet that goes to war. It's stupid and it's all for greed, it's all for corruption, it's for ego. And it's, I think, man just likes causing pain and suffering. It's not needed. Governments, all governments are there for themselves. They're not there for you. They're not there for anybody apart from themselves. And it's like the old saying goes, it doesn't matter who you vote for, the government always wins. And that's very, very true. I think the outcomes and the positive ones is that it highlighted people who otherwise, you know, wouldn't be interested in those subjects. Um, it, it, kind, it highlighted the injustices that was going on and people all of a sudden certainly around the early 80s started to wake up mm. to all of the horrendous things that were happening back then and a lot of us joined cnd i i was in cnd um i'm still a great believer in cnd i think nuclear weapons are just the worst thing to ever happen to this planet one day all it takes is a slight mistake. Say goodbye. Say goodbye to everything. Um, but a lot of kids became very aware of war. Being, became very aware of the government. I mean, Thatcher was in a prime. And she was the most single hated person within not just the punk scene, 
that the whole working class people and not just them either, middle class hated her and everything. It was only the people who were rich, greedy, selfish, who, you know, hung off her every word. She, she was <sighs> devastating for the UK in the 80s and into the early 90s. She was an absolute travesty. Um, so again, it was good. A lot of people who bought the punk records read the inner notes on the record sleeves and all of a sudden, you know, became aware of what was happening. Otherwise, they would not have been subjected to it. They wouldn't have known. So it was great from that kind of stance, I think. I do remember that gig because that gig then was... Uh, the video of it then came out as an official Nothing's Changed video. Um... And I was not aware of it for years and years and years. And then we were in America and again, we were sitting around some kid's house in New York and he put it on. And we didn't know what, you know, that it ever existed. And the first bit you have is us playing Nothing's Changed. And uh, yeah, you turn around and you see the camera come on me and I just spit at it. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it was just one of those reactions. Because I don't, I, I, I'm not very comfortable with having my photograph taken or <coughs> being videoed or anything. Because I never know how to react. <laughs> so I think whilst I'm playing and I see a great big camera come up into you, you think your natural reaction is just go <laughs> and just go at it. So a lot of people have commented on that over the years, but uh, yeah, it's one of the the rare ones that I actually do remember. Great time that was. Great, great time. Bass, I don't know really, because it only had four strings and I thought Paul Simonon looked pretty cool, so yeah. But I am um, never aspired to look as cool as him, unfortunately. Well, Brian got a bit ill and I think it was um, November, I forget, I was in Iceland at the time, not the shop, country. I think it was November 2017, yeah it was. And um, I got a text saying, would I like to stand in for Brian on the Verrugas? And straight away I went, yes! And then after I thought about it, I thought, fucking hell, they're, they're big old boots to fill, they are. But, yeah. So I, and I should have toured with the Verrugas in uh, that first year, 2017, but I had other commitments with Butcher Baby, so I couldn't. So my first gig with them was in January the 18th, 2018, at Resolution Festival at the Under Club, and I've been with them ever since, so few years now yeah I mean soldier boy I mean it's just like oh, you're doing what you're told kind of thing, you know I know the religion I mean, that's a, that's a great song, great sentiment, you know. I mean, there's all these people with a pretend friend fighting over fucking nothing, you know. Like, you know, you've sometimes it's a, they've read the same book in a different way and they're having a war, you know what I mean? And it's just a pretend person, you know. It's, um, you know, I mean, it is another religion, another fucking war, you know what I mean? And I think religions now... It, it, it was kind of evolving to not being as religion as we kind of knew it as a god, you know, it's um, way of a way of thinking kind of thing. I think that religion's being replaced with a way of thinking, but I think it's still going to cause the same wars. You know, it's still, you know, you either think like this or I'm against you. You know, I see that's building up now and it's just like, just like religion, but it's just not how we recognise it. Um, all systems fail. I mean, they do. I mean, it's people bit deep down are animals, you know. And then they, 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 you're never going to get a system that's going to encompass everybody. I mean, you know, don't matter what it is, not everybody's going to be on board. And like, you know, the Stalin and Hitler showed us that um, you can't just kill everybody. who doesn't want to do what you want to do, you know, that you can, it's not going to work like that. You've, all systems are going to fail. You know, it's just, 
you've got to kind of get a loose one to try and hold it all together, you know what I mean? Because not, not everybody's right, not everybody wants to live like you do, you know what I mean? And you can't just go around fucking killing people just because they don't want what you want, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want to be a victim, I mean, obviously nobody wants to, but well, they never used to, <laughs> and everybody seems to be collecting, oh, this has happened to me, that's happened, you know, everybody seems to be, you know, like whining about stuff, you know, rather than... Uh, that's why, you know, I don't want to be a victim, I don't want to be put down, I'm not going to be put down. Now everybody's saying, that, you know, it seems like, no, oh, I am. You know what I mean? I, I prefer the defiant thing. Fuck, you know, I don't recognise your shit. I'm not going to be part of it. I prefer that than, oh, this has happened. You know what I mean? It seems like everybody's, I don't know. Nothing's changed, it's just that, you know. We're, um, you know, the... Uh, we hadn't played for a couple of years and we, we we come back, the government's still the fucking same, you know, the the system's still the same. You know, I mean and that and that's all governments, it doesn't matter which which one you vote for, they, it's it's always the same, you know, nothing's changed, we're still here and and uh, this is us. You've got another religion, another war. That whole EP was based on basically religion you only had to look at the cover uh obviously war politics at the time and it was it was almost like a concept 12 inch because it was all around the same subjects same three subjects and most bands sang about those sort of issues at the time uh because they were so important in people's lives i mean they still are so you look at it now uh nothing's changed was about after we had our brief hiatus and we came back, you know, we realised just nothing has changed. <laughs> you know, a lot of things go under a different name, but they're the same thing. Politics haven't changed. Uh, and it was also a reflection on us as people because we hadn't changed. So it was, it was about the times and also about us as individuals. So I th it was a perfect title, really, because nothing had changed. You know, in, in our since the release of our last record, which was One Struggle, One Fight, which is about 1985, up until nine years later, when um, nothing's changed had been released. You know, in that period, nothing had changed. <laughs> She lost some more money, but too soft. Mrs. says that, too soft you are, I don't know, but it's not, you know, yeah, I know. But we're just in there, I and mean, it's hard to try and get, you know. People take advantage of you, you know what I mean? You learn, you learn that people will take advantage and go, you know, that's what you do in the world, it's like, yeah, you're not all good people. When you meet the great people in the scene, they go, oh, they go, aren't they all like that? No, they're not. No, they're not. And that's, should be, but, Unfortunately, they're not. They've put their arse and fucking and done nothing. You know what I mean? And no respect, and they played a cup. You know, who the fuck's that guy? What does he think he's done? Do you know what I mean? It's like treat people with fucking without the people there. I'm not here for that because just well, you just say get the crowd, get the brandy punch. No, no. You know what I mean? We're here because they're here. I blame them crowd for us being here 40 years. I went 40th anniversary. I went, it's your fucking fault, right? <laughs> but it is them, isn't it? If they weren't there, we wouldn't be, we're not going to keep doing it if no one turned up and go, we've done 12 gigs now and there's been four people there. So like, yes, I, think, I, I, I still think we've got it. I still think we can crack it. You know what I mean? God. So, yeah, so that's like, yeah, it's your fault, bastards. But thank you. Yeah. All systems fucking fire!